I've got so many of these, I'm getting this up all next time. Yes. So this one is the Liturgy of St. Mark.
is the Roman Rite. So we've had East Syrian, West Syrian, Alexandrian, now Roman. And as you can imagine, uh, the Roman Rite kind of takes its center where? Rome. Okay. Um, the Roman Rite tends to have a more clerical focus, which shouldn't surprise you. Um, and communion, at least that, that emphasis, as you'll see in this, um, really is more ocular. It has the elevation of the gifts, which the others didn't particularly have. Um, the idea that, that, that there's a miracle going on here, and it's for us, and, and going to benefit us. Now, you've seen that let the, let the gifts be sanctified and let us get some benefit from them, but that's going to become more clear in the Roman Rite. Um, and you, you have, as the Roman Rite develops, um, just well, what we've all encountered in history, largely um, a much more soteriological focus. Soteriology meaning that Christ's death was to do something. It was purposeful in meeting sin. This, what you have, is called the Mass of the Roman Rite. It uh, cannot be dated with any particular precision. Um, what is particular of note in Roman rites is, is what we have come to take for granted, and it's, it's a real formalized collect. Um, Receive, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, this unblemished offering which I, your unworthy servant, offer to you. See the clericalism here? Um, my living and true God for my innumerable sins. See the heavy sin language. Offenses and negligences for all who stand round and for all the faithful Christians alive and dead that it may avail for my salvation and theirs to eternal life. Um, that, and that in the prayer that follows it sound much more like the prayers that we're familiar with now than I think some of the other liturgies do. Um, so, then you get what has come to be another defining feature of the Roman Rite, which is versical response, um, which you see in the middle of page 163. The priest says, the Lord be with you. People say, and with your spirit, up with your hearts. We have them with the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is fitting and right. Um, that versical response form, you didn't see as much in the other liturgies. And it, it is a real distinguishing feature of the Roman Rite. Also worth your note um, is that in the Roman Rite, you get um, prayers that are specifically geared towards particular seasons of the church year. The Roman Rite has much more of an, an awareness of a, a calendar than the others do. Um, and you get in the section, if you see it, called Communicantes on 164. This is a curious little prayer. Um, in fellowship with, and, and you see in the parentheses, here a seasonal clause may follow. And venerating above all the memory of the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God, Mother of God and our Lord Jesus Christ, and also of your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, <laughs> Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Thaddeus, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Zixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Christogenus, Paul, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, by their merits and prayers, grant us to be defended in all things by the help of your protection through Christ our Lord. So you get, um, you might say, who are the rest of those people? Eight of them were popes, and four of them were martyrs. So you're, you're getting much more, not just a development of being part of a communion of saints, but of, of a church structure with some hierarchy. 
Um, and then at the top of 165, the qui pridi. Um, I didn't do particularly well in Latin, so don't judge me on my Latin. <laughs> I get by by the skin of my teeth. Um, who on the day before he suffered took bread in his holy and revered hands, lifted up his eyes to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, gave thanks to you, blessed, broke, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat from this, all of you, for this is my body. Likewise, after supper, taking also this glorious cup in his holy and revered hands, again he gave thanks to you, blessed, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink from it, all of you, for this is the cup in my blood, on the new and eternal covenant, the mystery of faith, which will be shed for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. As oft as you do this, you will do it in my remembrance. Um, did you notice there, there was a change um, which previously used the term gifts, now uses the word victims. An interesting, an interesting shift. Um, also, there is not an epiclesis. There's not an invoking of the Spirit. Um, though it, it kind of sounds like it's wanting to make one there, that they may become to us the body and blood, but you're not specifically asking the Spirit to do anything. A 
very interesting, interesting liturgy. Not there's there's not a lot um, here. I know I've thrown a lot of these at you, kind of in rapid fire successions. But what what stands out for you in them, if anything? I heard it in the wrong way, mm -hmm. um, invoking intercessions of uh, Archangel Blessed Michael. Uh, mm -hmm. And so is that in the others? And I just didn't notice Invoking of, of particular angels and, and saints. Yeah, that, that, that comes to be a much more common feature. Some, as you saw, some families make that more a, a forefront of the liturgy than others do. Um, but it does, it does come to grow as, as the idea of a communion of saints grows. Now, the Roman one certainly made it front and center. You get the sense from the Roman with all that sort of multiple prayers and blessings and so on, that that's kind of what an institution does. It just kind of puts out more and more suppers and the Romans are glad to have a very simple and um, kind of a utilitarian. Yeah, some some are more elaborate than others, uh, the Roman, certainly. And as you, as you mentioned, uh, the Mozarabic is, is a much simpler liturgy. We don't have all of it, um, a lot of them, but, but you, you've, you've seen enough of, of the different ones to get a sense that there's, there's some distinctions and divisions among them, and to note certain things. So the idea is that when, you're, when we're looking at our Eucharistic prayers, which we will begin to do, I promise this is going somewhere, <laughs> um, you will begin to notice and look for some of those things. You'll begin, they'll start to stand out. Okay, the Sanctus, which you all knew was there, but maybe you, you didn't because uh, the, the choir was really singing it or because we sing it, um, it, it will take more of a forefront. And then when you get to an institution narrative, you will see even in A, B, C, and D, it, it's slightly different. Um, and, and when you get to an epiclesis, you'll begin to notice, okay, what what is it we're asking the spirit to do? Is it just about the bread and wine? Is it about us? Do, does the invoking of the Spirit come upon us first and then the bread and wine? Or does it leave us out altogether? You'll, you'll start to notice these particular things. And at the back of your minds, you should begin, um, if you haven't already, to kind of wrestle with what Anglicanism has always wrestled with, which is what exactly is happening. What, what, what is going on? Clearly, we, we think the Spirit is being invoked, and by the Spirit's invocation, this bread and wine becomes something more than just bread and wine, which is why uh, we don't pour it right back into the bottle after the service, which we don't. So what is it, what's happening? And, and Anglicanism is, is, is rather purposefully squishy on that subject. Um, walking that fine line between that anamnesis, the memorial, um, and, and yet the spirit is being invoked in a way that, that following some of these liturgies, we think something has changed. There is a change. So what we're going to do at some point, um, whenever we meet again, we'll, it'll be a, a while, um, is that we're going to start to look at the development of the Book of Common Prayer and those liturgies. And you will see um, in those early English Book of Common Prayers, of which we grow out of, um, you will begin to see the transformation of, of the Eucharistic prayer there too, largely depending on uh, which faction was in power. Um, and, and you'll see an epiclesis disappear and reemerge. Um, all very interesting if, if you're going to nerd out on this one.
apparently you're willing to do, come sit through all these liturgies. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, and, and we'll be back sometime. Thank you.